This lecture is called Dimensions. This is just for fun. <clears throat> okay, let's look at this equation, one that we're all familiar with. Uh, it says your income equals your hourly pay rate multiplied by time. We would say that your income is proportional to the amount of time that you work and vice versa. Income is also proportional to the hourly pay rate and vice versa. So proportional means that uh, if you vary one of these quantities, uh, the other one varies by the same amount multiplied by a constant. Okay, so your income is equal to some constant multiplied by the time. That means it's proportional to the time. And your income is equal to some other constant times the hourly pay rate. Uh, so we say it's proportional to the hourly pay rate. Uh, it's implicit that whatever the other quantities are, are held fixed when you're talking about proportionality. Uh, so for example, um, if you fix your hourly pay rate, then your income uh, will simply double if the time you work doubles. Uh, or conversely, if you fix the amount of time you work, then your income uh, will just equal your hourly pay rate multiplied by whatever that time is. Okay, we say your hourly pay rate is inversely proportional to time. That means for a given amount of income, um, the longer you have to work to make that income, the lower your hourly pay rate is. So if you double your work time to get the same income, that means your pay rate was only half what it was before. Okay, so that's the idea of proportionality and inverse proportionality. And we have similar relationships in physics. Here's a simple one. Distance is speed times time. So that tells you for a fixed speed, uh, if you double the time that you go at that speed, then you'll double your distance. Okay, so distance is proportional to speed, it's proportional to time, whereas speed and time are inversely proportional. Okay, so for a fixed amount of distance, um, if you double your speed, that means you'll get there in half the time. Okay, I uh, just want to review, hopefully you're all familiar with powers. Uh, if you take a number and you uh, raise it to a power, which you write as a superscript here or an exponent, uh, what that means is you start with the number one and you multiply by this number as many times as are in the exponent. Okay, so two to the third power, you multiply by two three times, you get eight. Okay, so two to the fifth power would be 32. And likewise, there's negative powers. That means you start with one and you divide uh, the number of times in the exponent. Okay, so again, two to the minus third power. Uh, you divide by two three times, which means you get one divided by eight, which is the inverse of two to the positive third power. Okay. And the reason we use powers, um, in this class anyway, is for scientific notation. Uh, we may have very large or very small numbers that we're dealing with. And instead of, you know, counting out lots and lots of zeros, you know, from the decimal place, uh, we just write the numbers in a standard form with just one digit in front of the decimal. And then we use powers of 10 to tell you, you know, how big or small the number actually is. Okay, so here's some examples. Um, just look those over. And then uh, you should probably just practice, make sure you know how to do this. Um, I'm asking for a scientific notation with three significant figures. What that means is one decimal in uh, sorry, one digit in front of the decimal and then two digits after the decimal. That would be three significant figures.
And you can just pause this for practice and come back to it. And check your answers here. Um, this is what you should have gotten. Notice some of the numbers are rounded off. Um, but hopefully you can understand why that's a scientific notation with three significant figures. OK, uh, when you compute on a calculator, uh, generally calculators have some key that represents uh, raising 10 to a power. It's usually double E or EXP, uh, but there are some variations. Uh, every now and then you'll have one that says times 10 to the X. Um, but the important thing is when you're using that key on the calculator, that button already includes the times 10. So you do not write in the times 10 part of that. That gives you an extra factor of 10. OK, so um, you should have a scientific calculator. Uh, just check and make sure you know how to use it with scientific notation. OK. Um, it's also helpful to know how to do these calculations uh, without a calculator. Because uh, this will help you basically check your results. Um, example here is you're multiplying two numbers together. You can always take the numbers and just multiply the numbers without worrying about the factors of 10. So 4 times 2 gives you 8. And then because uh, powers just tell you how many times to multiply or divide, uh, you can simply just add and subtract the uh, exponents. So 3 plus 8 is 11. That means you're multiplying by 10 3 times plus 8 times, which is 11 times. Okay, and then a little shorthand calculator notation would be just use the letter E and then put the exponent. Okay, so here's a couple other examples. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 3 minus 8 is uh, negative 5. Okay, so that's 2 times 10 to the minus 5th. And 4 times 10 to the third divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 8. So 4 divided by 2 gives you 2. This time it's 3 minus negative 8. So that comes out to be 10 to the plus 11. So be careful when you have negative exponents, you're subtracting a negative number. That's the same as adding a positive number. OK, you'll need to memorize these uh, standard prefixes. Um, these are used, uh, again, as kind of a shorthand, so you don't have to write out all these powers of 10. Um, just memorize these. The only tricky one maybe is uh, this is a Greek letter mu for micro. Uh, sometimes it's just written MC. You may see that on some of your medicines. Uh, the dose might be micrograms. Um, but basically, they're powers of 10, usually multiples of 3, except for uh, centi, which the only place we'll use that is centimeters. Um, but anyway, you just need to memorize that list. OK, an important thing to keep in mind is that if you just write down uh, an equation with numbers, that might be correct in math class, but it's not going to be correct in a science class because you're not using the units. And in particular, let's give an example. 8 miles multiplied by 6 miles per hour is not equal to 48 hours. Okay, <clears throat> That's just wrong. Uh, every calculation, you need to put in the units and show how the units that go into the equation yield the units that come out of the equation. Okay, So in this case, um, if you're really trying to figure out how far you go, um, or sorry, how long it takes to go eight miles. If you're traveling uh, six miles per hour, you would multiply eight miles times one hour per six miles. The miles cancels, and you get an answer of 1.3 hours. OK, um, notice uh, the same information can be expressed with, in this case, two different numbers. So 6 miles per hour is your speed. 
but you have the same information if you say it takes one hour to go six miles. So one hour per six miles, that would be your slowness. So it's different numbers, but the same information. You can um, multiply the distance times your slowness to get the time, or you can divide the distance by the speed, and that gives you also the same time. Okay, the standard uh, metric units uh, we'll be using in this class. Um, so length is meters, time is in seconds. So velocity would be meters per second. And here's a more complete list. I'll just let you go over that on your own. The only uh, tricky thing here is a lot of times you'll see conversion between kilograms and pounds. Usually um, pounds is interpreted as a force the force of gravity pulling, you know, how hard gravity pulls something towards the earth. Um, and the unit for that in metric is newtons. Um, whereas um, your mass is a property of uh, whatever object you're referring to. Um, your mass wouldn't change even if you move around the earth and get a different gravitational field, or even if you went to the moon, the mass would stay the same. Uh, but the force of gravity might be different. Okay, um, how do we come up with these units? Um, some of them are just based on standard objects. So for example, the kilogram is just the mass of a reference cylinder that's kept in France. Um, that may change soon. People are trying to come up with a better definition of the kilogram. Uh, the second um, used to refer to you know some fraction of uh, Earth's rotation, but now it's the time it takes for uh, a certain yellow light from cesium atoms to vibrate you know nine billion times. And the meter is the interesting definition because. It's the distance light travels in a certain amount of time, this fraction of a second. And the speed of light is built into this equation. Okay, So the speed of light is actually defined by the way we define the meter. And if you're using that definition, if you think about it, that means you can't actually measure the speed of light, uh, at least not in meters, because that's, uh, th that speed is built into your definition. Okay, here's just some uh, basic conversions, you know, approximate conversions that you should just memorize. So it'll help you uh, familiarize yourself with the units. So a meter is about a yard or three feet. A meter per second is about two miles per hour. Four newtons is about a pound. Uh, a kilowatt is roughly a horsepower and a kilowatt hour is roughly a thousand food calories, uh, which would be a physically a, what we call a mega calorie. Notice um, the capital C here means a thousand physical calories. So this is really a million physical calories, uh, which is what we have here, mega calorie. Um, and that's roughly four uh, mega joules. Mega means million. Okay. And then also to give you a little perspective, uh, so a tall person is about six feet tall, um, not a basketball player maybe, but anyway, reasonably tall person, uh, six feet tall, uh, about two meters. Uh, a baseball pitcher, a really good one, can throw a 100 mile per hour fastball, that's about 50 meters per second. Um, a big person, maybe 200 pounds, would be about 800 newtons. A car engine would be roughly 100 horsepower, which would be 100 kilowatts. And your daily food intake, 2,000 food calories with a capital C uh, per day. Um, in terms of energy, that's about 2 kilowatt hours or 2 megacalories or um, 8 megajoules. Okay, um, 
when you're converting from one type of unit to another, uh, you can just think of the unit as kind of a reference length. So for example, 3.4 meters means 3.4 times the length of a standard meter stick. Um, whenever you have units uh, in fractions, you can just treat them like numbers. So in this case, meters divided by meters. Uh, it's just like 3 divided by 3 gives you 1. So multiplying by 1 is doesn't change the answer, so you can just cancel those out. Okay, so um, example here, if you want to know how many uh, seconds are in a year, you start with one year, you multiply 365 days per year, 24 hours per day, 60 minutes per hour, 60 seconds per minute, and then Notice how I kept um, the numerator and denominator separate. It's always good to use that kind of uh, fractional form. You can just multiply all the numbers on the top and then divide the numbers on the bottom, which in this case is all ones, uh, and then that gives you your answer. Uh, so just keep in mind, converting units, 365 days is the same as one year, or at least approximately. Um, so this fraction, 365 days over one year, that fraction is equal to one. So converting units, you're really multiplying by one, but you're expressing one as a ratio of different unit, units. Okay, um, let's uh, look at uh, some examples here of how you solve problems, uh, keeping track of units. I'll start with a couple of easy ones. So apples are on sale, 50 cents per pound. How much will it cost to buy four pounds of apples? Um, and gasoline costs $4 per gallon, or at least it used to. How much gas can you buy with $20? Okay, these are probably things you know how to solve. So in the first case, uh, you multiply four pounds times 50 cents per pound. Notice the pounds will cancel because you have pounds divided by pounds. And so you get uh, $2, which is the remaining unit. Um, in the second case, you take $20, you divide $4 per gallon. Uh, or conversely, you can multiply one gallon per $4. In this case, the dollars cancels and you end up with gallons. So it'd be five gallons. Okay. Now, Suppose you have a problem where you're not really familiar with the units. So in this case, um, a flashlight battery has an electrical potential of 3 joules per coulomb and delivers uh, 1.5 joules per second of power to the bulb. How many coulombs per second of electrical current flow through the battery and the light bulb? Okay, so you may not be familiar with these units, but um, you can still solve the problem. Okay, basically you're trying to get coulombs per second. Okay, that's here, how many coulombs per second. Uh, from joules per coulomb and joules per second, which are the units given here. This is joules per coulomb and this is joules per second. Okay, so if you just fiddle around with those fractions, you'll see that coulombs per second equals joules per second divided by joules per coulomb. Okay, remember if you're dividing by a fraction, the denominator of the denominator ends up in the numerator. So that's uh, the same as coulombs per second, and the joules cancels. <clears throat> okay, so once you know how the units line up, you just put the numbers in with the units. So it, it was 1.5 joules per second, 3.0 joules per coulomb, so the answer is 0.5 coulombs per second. Okay, so the units actually can help you solve the problem. Okay, so that's all for this lecture.